Last year, I released my CH160 review. In that review, I used the Cooler Master Master Liquid Atmos. The CH160 actually doesn't support liquid cooling, but thanks to the versatility of the Atmos, we were able to use the cooler in the strip back configuration. This time around, the Atmos 2 leans in on that flexibility more. There are now four different SKUs to choose from and black and white, 240 and 360mm options. The LCD and pixel display, the VRM fan option, and the entry-level Atmos 2 with the magnetic pump covers. The all-new LCD display with a 2.1-inch screen for displaying system stats, GIFs, and animations. The pixel display that uses a pixelated array of LEDs to create a retro-style image, animations, and GIFs using the pixel editor inside the master control software. Both the LCD and pixel display uses a USB-C to USB-2 internal header, and both require the Cooler Master's master control software to use. The VRM fan option maxes out the coolest capability, cooling the board's VRMs. The VRM cover is the tallest pump cover at just under 60 millimeters, and it requires a dedicated PWM header, which is unfortunate because most iTech boards only come with three PWM headers. The last option is the entry-level Atmos 2 kit with an ultra-low profile pump assembly at just 38 millimeters, one of the shortest on the market, if not the shortest. This kit comes with magnetic covers for various designs, including one of my favorites, the super stealthy and minimal black pump cover. Instead of two single flow fans, Cooler Master is following the wave of companies unifying the fans into one assembly. From my understanding, the fans are exactly the same as their previous Atmos, but they connect from both sides with a proprietary connector, giving you a bit more freedom when cable managing. I personally wasn't a fan of the original single flow fans, and that remains to be the case here, but I must give props where it's due I do think the design of this fan is better than the previous Sickle Flow fans, and you can even see the RGB from the side, which is a really cool effect. But unfortunately, they're just really loud, and RGB fans are a bit overwhelming. However, as you'll see, they perform adequately. The radiator is the standard 27mm thickness, nothing really special to report here. The Amos 2 uses a new dual chamber pump design, which they claim increases water pressure and flow. A key difference is that the cables from the pump run inside the tube sleeves, ultimately increasing tube rigidity. If you have a case like the Forum T1, you'll likely have additional difficulties installing the Atmos 2 over the original Atmos, though not impossible. There's overall more cable clutter this time around. Exiting from the top of the sleeves, you have two PWM headers, one for the fan and the other for the pump. There's also an ARGB2 header for RGB control. Unfortunately, you'll need the entire cable to power the pump, even if you swap out the fans later on, which is a real headache. The plus side to this is cable managing, which makes it easier to stow away cables at the top of the motherboard. Though it could be a deal burger for those looking for a clean and minimal look, a look we see with the Atmos Stealth using a single PWM cable for the pump. They include two mounting kits, AMD's AM4 and AM5, and Intel's LGA1700, and the newer 1851 socket. For the Intel socket, we get an offset bracket, which we don't get with AMD. We actually get an objectively worse mounting system compared to the original Atmos, now with two plastic brackets, which doesn't feel as secure as before. Though I have not had any issues with durability or fitment. The rest of the mounting kit is the same, with double threaded standoffs and thumb screws for securing down the pump assembly. The Atmos 2 holds your hand when unboxing. The packaging separated into steps. Cooler Master has been really great with their packaging thus far. We ran some tests to see if the Atmos 2 performs better than its predecessor, the Atmos Stealth. We also tested the stock fans against the Cooler Master Morbius 120 fan and the Noctua NF-A1225 Chromax fan. Testing fans at 50%, 100%, and noise normalized at 5 decibels over ambient. Our test system is based on the CH160 from Deepcool, like the first Atmos, to get the Atmos 2 to fit in the CH160, you had to make some soft modifications. This includes four 6mm M3 standoffs and four M3 countersunk screws. It's important to note that if you do try this mod, that I use plastic standoffs, and I'm not sure what the actual thread size is for the case. I suggest you find this out to avoid stripping anything. The board we're using is the ASUS Strix X870i motherboard. To push the heat envelope, we're using the AMD Ryzen 9 9950X 3D, a very power-hungry 200-watt TDP chip with 16 cores and 32 threads, with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory from Team Group from their T-Create line. One thing to note, temperature and noise is reported in over ambient, so just add your ambient noise or temperature to get accurate numbers. At 50%, the Sickle Flow and Morbus fans go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a slight lead on the Atmos 2, nothing too serious. At that speed, the Sickle Flow fans are the loudest at 5 decibels over ambient, followed by the Morbius. The Noctua's are the quietest at 3 decibels over ambient. 
At 100% speed, we see a decrease in temperature across the board for the Atmos 2, up to 2 degrees, even on the sugar flow fans. With that 2 degree reduction, we see noise increase substantially to 13 decibels over ambient for the sugar flow and Morbius fans. The Noctuals remain the quietest, but that's also because it tops out at 2000 RPM while the Morbius and sugar flow reach 2400 RPM. At 5 decibels over ambient, a much realistic level, the Atmos 2 does a clean sweep again with all samples capping out at 55 degrees over ambient. We tested the VRM fan and things got even more impressive. The tiny fan can hit up to 4000 RPM, something I cannot recommend doing. In a 5 decibels over ambient noise profile, the VRM temps on the Strix X870i motherboard vary wildly, from 60 degrees to 48 degrees over ambient at 100% VRM speed. Even at a modest 25 to 50 percent speed, we see a 9 degree improvement. With that 48 degree VRM temp, we see a huge noise penalty. You start to see diminishing returns at 25 percent, which is impressive. That'll get you about a 9 degree reduction. The CPU sees a much smaller benefit, but an improvement here is nice to see. Up to 3 degrees, but I had settled for 2 knowing just how loud the VRM fan can get at 100 percent speed. We see another substantial improvement for memory temperatures, a 12 degree reduction at 100 percent and 8 to 10 degrees at the lower end of the fan spectrum. And on the Samsung 990 Pro, we see up to a 13 degree reduction, a more modest 5 to 10 degree reduction on the lower end. What does this mean? To me, the Atmos 2 provides a small but meaningful improvement in overall temperatures. The biggest advantage is having the VRM fan option as you can see really good improvements not only for the VRM but for all other motherboard components. Here are the noise samples for the three fans. Obviously, the Noctuals sound a bit better, but the Morbius fans are a fair second. You can't really go wrong with the stock Sickle Flow fans either, especially if you want that RGB feature. Here are some noise samples of the VRM fan. As I mentioned before, you really don't want to use the VRM fan at full power. 25 to 50% is ideal for stellar performance at those levels. Now, do I recommend upgrading to the Atmos 2? Let's go over the pros and cons. For the cons, we get a decent amount of cable clutter. In turn, we get thicker and harder to work with tubes. Stiffer tubes just don't work well in small cases, a place where the Atmos 2 is needed the most. The AMD mounting kit is not as robust as its predecessor with plastic brackets instead of all metal ones. Connectivity issues specifically with the LCD USB-C connector. We saw this initially with the Machines & More review of the Atmos 2 where we thought it was an isolated issue. I just had to apply more than usual force when inserting the cable. Even then, it didn't always work. The pixel display was unaffected. I confirmed this issue on my sample which triggered the delay of the Atmos 2, specifically the LCD model. They claim to have addressed this in the retail units. Another con is that they only include four radiator screws and not eight, since the unified sickle flow fan has only four screw holes. I get it, I guess, it's just weird. The last con for me is the lack of software functionality. With the current version, you get the pixel editor and some custom options for the LCD, but it just feels bare bones. There's not even an option to control the RGB on the fan or pump, a bizarre and unfortunate reality. Hopefully with time, they can add these basic features and more quality of life features like a way to remove the Cooler Master logo from the LCD screen options. The pros, there's more options to choose from. With stylistic choices, even with the base level Atmos 2 kit, retail packaging is also really nice with adequate labeling. They include their own in-house thermal paste, which I use for today's testing. Small to decent thermal improvements across the board, even better temps when using the VRM fan kit. Then there's the shorter overall pump assembly as low as 38 millimeters, which is a game changer for many iTechs builds that support 240 mil liquid coolers. Though the mounting kit isn't as robust on AM4 and AM5, the process is super easy. 
All pump covers, including the LCD and pixel display, are magnetically attached, making it easy to swap out kits. They plan to release the flex kits where you can buy the LCD and pixel display, along with the VRM fan kit down the line. As for pricing and availability, I don't have too much information. Prices will vary wildly based on your region. So back to my question on if I recommend the Atmos 2. Yes, if you want the cool new pump covers or need a really short pump assembly for tight situations. If you already own the Atmos 1, then I don't see a serious reason to upgrade unless it's for the VRM fan, which does take thermos to the next level. That's all I have for you. Please feel free to check out the links below if you wish to pick up any of the parts used in this video. Your support means the world to me and helps me continue delivering the content you care about. Thank you and see you next time.